Hello there, I'm John Facenda, and each evening I bring you important news of the day here on Channel 10. This morning, however, I'm going to be bringing you some news about two things that are certainly very important and familiar to each of you. Pepsi-Cola and television. You know, they go together, Pepsi and TV. They both appeal to almost everybody. Pepsi's been a favorite around most households for years. I know it certainly has around ours. And television? Well, I can speak from experience there, too. In the area served by WCAU and other Philadelphia television stations, you'll find at least one television set in better than nine out of every ten homes. And what's more, we know that the average family spends over five hours a day viewing TV. In fact, we Americans own more television sets than vacuum cleaners, electric irons, or would you believe it, even telephones. The average family spends more time enjoying television than doing just about anything else other than working or sleeping. And no wonder. Where else will you find all of this in their own living rooms and absolutely free? Jack Benny. You know, this year I'm going to be on every Sunday with my entire cast and many guest stars. Uh, yes, every Sunday. Now, I know this is quite an exhausting schedule, and I'm hoping that you'll be able to take it. A venerable judge had a favorite saying. Before there can be justice, there must be truth. And truth comes to court in many disguises. Ending the masquerade so that justice can be done is the function of attorneys. Mr. Mason, I don't know what you're getting at. Now, uh, why is it this cloak was designed in such a manner? Why? Because you designed it with one purpose in mind. You designed it as a weapon for murder. Oh, hi, Daddy! Oh, gee, Daddy, it's so good to see you! Behold, Danny Williams, absolute monarch of his marital domain. A father whose mere approach is a celebration. A husband whose slightest wish is a command. What is that? I'm the head of this house. I wear the pants in this family. <laughs> I order you to hang the picture on that wall. <laughs> Don't you dare hang it on that fireplace. Kathy, I, I forbid it. Forbid? Forbid! That's the word I've been waiting for! <laughs> Sunday night in the United States, millions of Americans wind up their weekend activities. But Moscow's up and doing, with red leaders active in the ancient Kremlin. In Tokyo, complex forces are at work that might alter Japan's course. At Cape Canaveral, a countdown may be in progress in the race for space. Late meetings in Washington can mean urgent communiques touching on America's international policy. Uh -oh. oh, here here he comes, Miss Kitty. Doc's heading this way. Oh, well, I think I'll just drop out the back way. Yeah. What are, what are you trying to avoid him or something? Oh, well, man, he's driving everybody crazy, giving out free diagnosis. You talk your rotten to a sick bed. Well, right. well, why don't we just throw it right back out? Well, hello there. Say, Matt, I've been wanting to ask you, are you getting enough greens in your diet lately? You Doc, know, are you feeling all right? Oh, I'm feeling... Well, Doc, why don't you just sit right down there in the chair? Well, you know, you're not looking too chipper. I don't. Doc, your eyes are looking awful glassy. My eyes? It must be that complaint that's going around. And I can tell you what it is, Doc. You've just been watching too much television. Of course, we all know they didn't have television in old Dodge City. But if they had, you can bet that Doc, Chester, and all the rest would have been watching just as we do. Yes, there are many reasons why television is popular. And the boundaries of its popularity are determined only by the power of the transmitter. You'll find the viewing habits of a family here in Philadelphia are very much like those of a family, say, up in Phillipsburg. And when my friend Jack Whitaker, for instance, forecasts the sunny weekend and it snows, he gets as many threatening letters from Allentown and Atlantic City as he does from Ardmore and Ambler right here near Philadelphia. But if television has made the biggest change in our leisure habits in the last several decades, it's also been the biggest thing that ever happened to advertising. 
Television is the hardest working, most successful salesman the businessman has ever had. Because television is really the closest thing there is to a personal call on every home in your franchise area by your best route supervisor or salesman. What's more, when television does the job, it's as though that salesman were calling not only to sell, but to entertain the whole family, to bring the latest news, to forecast the weather. If all of your route men were that versatile, they'd certainly be most welcome guests and effective salesmen, just as television is. A lot of advertisers have discovered that television's power, and they've used it. They've used it to make their products household words all over America. Like these, for example. Now get the flavor of coffee beans still warm from roasting in new Instant Maxwell House. I like Scott Tissue because it lasts longer. But Linda likes Scott Tissue because it's pink. Post Toasties. Crackle with fresh corn flavor. Just a little bit better. Less than a penny's worth of Scotch brand tape seals 10 packages. Your biggest penny's worth is Scotch brand tape. Household words, indeed they are. Of course, some of these companies were giants before television came along. But when it did arrive, they saw in it the means for becoming even bigger. Ten years ago, for example, Procter & Gamble had annual sale net sales of $632 million. Last year, after devoting 90% of their total advertising budget annually to television for the past several years, Procter & Gamble had net sales in excess of a billion dollars. On the other hand, other advertisers used television to rise from obscurity. Eight years ago in Holyoke, Massachusetts, the small family-owned Adele Chemical Company, makers of an all-purpose liquid cleaning agent, were about to go out of business. In a last effort to stay alive against giant competition, they gathered every bit of their advertising money from all other media and staked their future on television. Using short, hard-hitting messages with a large number of spots, they used the principle of repetition to solidly establish their brand name and the benefits of the product in the minds of viewers. The brand name? Less toil. Well, the rest, as you know, is advertising history. This year, Adele Chemical, now a multi-million dollar corporation, will spend over $11 million for advertising, making less oil the largest single product advertiser in America. And virtually 100% of that expenditure will go into television. Through television, less oil took its place alongside brand names like Maxwell House, Johnson's Wax, Kleenex, Campbell's Soup, Family Favorites All. But there's room for one more here, another family favorite. Pepsi Cola belongs on television. Now you may be already be thinking this, but perhaps you've also been thinking advertising on a large market television station is expensive. People like Procter & Gamble can afford a large television advertising campaign because they sell their products everywhere. I'm big in my area, true, but I can't afford to advertise on the same scale because the boundaries of my franchise area won't let me make the investment alone. Much of my investment would go into waste circulation. Gentlemen, the program we are proposing today will enable you, through cooperation with one another, to employ the power, the prestige, and the impact of the most potent of all media, television, just as Procter & Gamble or a general food does. Yet each of you will invest only in the advertising that will sell Pepsi-Cola in your own franchise area. Now, WCAU and other Philadelphia television stations deliver programs, entertainment, and advertising messages to nearly two million homes in the 19 counties of your combined franchise areas. Philadelphia television prices are, of course, set accordingly. Procter & Gamble pays $425 for an evening announcement on Philadelphia television because that announcement will be seen by over a million people throughout the area. 
all potential customers. At that rate, television becomes quite inexpensive for Procter & Gamble because it costs them only about 35 cents to reach a thousand potential customers with their selling message. Now, Mr. Noxon, you do business up there in Reading. Obviously, it's impractical for you to invest $425 for a similar announcement because you're limited by your franchise boundaries to, tell, to sell Pepsi-Cola only in Berks and Schuylkill counties. The $425 price includes people in, say, in Wilmington, down at Atlantic City, and several hundred thousand others who are someone else's customers, not yours. So it follows, logically, that you should invest only in that portion of the cost which pays for your advertising in your franchise area. Specifically, there are 89,506 homes in Berks and Schuylkill counties who regularly view Philadelphia television. These represent 5.5% of all the homes in the 19-county area. Thus, you are asked to invest in the amount of 5.5% of the total budget. The rest is shared by your fellow franchise bottlers. Now, let's examine each of your areas, if I will, one by one. Mr. Grant, as the Pepsi bottler in Allentown, you can potentially sell your product to some 92,697 television families that live in Lehigh and Northampton and the parts of Bucks County, which you serve. These 92,000-odd householders regularly tune to Philadelphia stations for their favorite programs, and they represent five and seven-tenths percent of all television homes in the combined 19-county area. Thus, your share of the plan would amount to five and seven-tenths percent. Now, Mr. Boyle, your bottling operation in New Brunswick serves several counties, but only one, Mercer County, is considered within the coverage of Philadelphia stations. 42,934 households in Mercer County get their television service from Philadelphia, representing two and seven-tenths percent of all television homes in the combined franchise areas. Thus, your share of the total budget would be two and seven-tenths percent. Now, Mr. Honickman, as Pensalkin Butler, you sell Pepsi-Cola to Burlington, Camden, and Gloucester counties, and in these counties, 188,074 homes view the Philadelphia stations. These are 11 and 7 tenths percent of the total TV homes in the combined franchise areas with which we're concerned. Thus, your share of the plan, 11 and 7 tenths percent. Mr. Bro, from your plant down in Atlantic City, you can potentially sell Pepsi to families in Atlantic, Cape May, Salem, and Cumberland counties. 99,486 homes of which tune to Philadelphia stations for their favorite programs. They represent six and two tenths percent of the TV homes in the combined areas. Thus, your share of the television budget would be six and two tenths percent. Mr. Bro, this time the younger one. Your bottling operation in Wilmington serves Newcastle, Chester, and Delaware counties, among others. But in these three, 292,745 homes, or 18 and one-tenth percent of the total, get their television service from Philadelphia. Thus, your share, 18 and one-tenth percent. And finally, Mr. Gronke. As Philadelphia butler, you sell Pepsi-Cola in Philadelphia, Montgomery, and part of Bucks County. And in these counties live 807,558 families who regularly view our Philadelphia television stations. These represent about half, 50 and one-tenth percent to be exact, of the total number of television homes in the combined franchise areas we have examined. Thus, your share of the television advertising budget would be 50 and one-tenth percent. Altogether, gentlemen, over 1,613,000 homes within range of a powerful cooperative television campaign. Gentlemen, television and mass consumption products go together. Television can sell Pepsi to your customers. And through the practical plan we have just demonstrated, you can reap all the benefits of television advertising and still invest only in the advertising that works for you. 
Later in the meeting, you will hear the specifics of a power-packed plan that has been devised to build sales, increase in-home consumption of Pepsi-Cola, impress present and potential dealers with the support you're giving them, and fire up your route managers and route salesmen to do a better selling job. The major concept of the plan is spearheaded by prime evening time when the whole family is watching. Your announcement will be next to some of the most popular programs on television, and you'll be there every night of the week, every week. The plan proposed includes 29 announcements every week, 15 of them in the middle evening, in and around such programs as To Tell the Truth, The Danny Thomas Show, The Ed Sullivan Show, 77 Sunset Strip, Hawaiian Eye, Lawrence Welk, Person to Person, U.S. Steel Hour, and our own 11 o'clock report. Not all of these evening announcements are scheduled on one station. In order to draw from the best of Philadelphia's two leading television stations, several of the announcements will be selected from the WFIL-TV Channel 6 evening schedule, as well as from the evening programs of WCAU-TV Channel 10. In addition, a proportion of your TV spots will be within movies on WCAU-TV for feature films, you know, or perhaps the most universally popular program category on television. For instance, over half the families in your areas watch the Channel 10 early and late shows at least once each week. And in order to reach them, there'll be a Pepsi-Cola spot in almost every early and late show every night of the week. An important part of your market are teenagers, aren't they? To reach these young people, five Pepsi-Cola TV commercials every week will be placed within the popular teenage program, Dick Clark's American Bandstand on WFIL-TV. So, one final question remains. What sort of selling message will give us the very best use of all that the proposed television campaign has to offer? What sort of selling message will ensure the best sales return for our own investment? Well, to answer that, friends, let's examine carefully our product and the selling job we have to do. Pepsi is a well-known product and a well-known brand name. We don't have to explain what it is or how to use it. Neither do we have to dramatize or diagram the benefits of our product. Certainly everyone is well acquainted with Pepsi's sparkling taste and the refreshment it offers. But what we do have to, to create is a desire for Pepsi-Cola, a desire by constantly reminding people of the product and of the pleasure it delivers. And we need to create this desire in as many people as possible, as often as possible. And to really complete the selling job, we want to create the desire in an atmosphere in which a person is likely to be able to act. That is, in the relaxed comfort of the home. The selling tool we have chosen is one with a proven record of achievement, the 10 second spot. We chose it because the 10-second spot, more than any other kind of announcement, is suited to the selling job I have just described. 10 seconds. Hmm. How long is 10 seconds, really? Well, as we all know, time is usually as long as the circumstances make it seem. There are times when it seems much too long. Consider, if you will, the recent professional football game between the Cleveland Browns and our own Philadelphia Eagles. Let's go back to the final seconds of that fantastic football game. If you remember, Philadelphia is one point behind. Time for just one play. But the Eagles can win the game if their try for a second, last second field goal is good. The crowd is going wild. They're ready on the field. Here's the play that will win or lose the ball game. And it's all over, and what a sensational finish. All right, now, you missed only 10 seconds of that football game. But to an anxious fan, it was an eternity. So you see, 10 seconds can be just long enough in another situation as well. For instance, when you want to simply remind someone to enjoy a refreshing Pepsi. <laughs> Pepsi refreshes without filling. Pour yourself a Pepsi and relax. Yes, it takes only a few seconds to establish an idea. 
And as a matter of fact, much advertising depends on considerably less exposure time than just 10 seconds to do the selling job. Research has shown that a full-page newspaper or magazine ad gets an average of about five seconds viewing time. The typical outdoor poster gets only about four seconds to implant its idea. Thus, the 10-second spot not only gives you ample time for the job you have to do, but it gives you more ways to do it. Sound. Pepsi refreshes without filling. Pour yourself a Pepsi and relax. Pictures. Live action. Pepsi refreshes without filling. Pour yourself a Pepsi and relax. Another part of the job, as we mentioned, is to reach as many people as possible as often as possible. Here again, the 10-second spot is best suited. The 10 seconds cost less than longer announcements, thus you can buy more of them. As an example, with the same budget, you can actually buy more than twice as many 10-second spots as 20-second spots. And it follows that the more announcements you have on the air, the better chance you have to reach more people more often. Only 10-second high-frequency spots expose so many people to your message so many times at so little cost. Finally, nighttime 10-second announcements reach people in the comfort of their homes. They give you the opportunity to inject your product into an atmosphere of relaxation and enjoyment, where the chances are the greatest that the viewer can, on the spot, act upon the desire for Pepsi-Cola that your announcements will create. Night after night, in and around their favorite television programs, your customers will be invited to have a Pepsi tempted to enjoy sparkling Pepsi-Cola.